All right, everything is clean. Don't forget these little dowel pins. There's two of them, one on this side and then one on the back side over here. Clean the head off. It's pretty much ready to uh, put back in. So I'm gonna put the head gasket on the block and we'll go ahead and drop it on there. I was a little confused about how these head gaskets go on because in the factory service manual, it says the markings go up and to the front of the engine but uh, they only have one part number, which means you have to spin this thing around since the heads have like reverse uh, cooling ports on them. So like this has the cooling ports on the back like that and then that side has, it on, has them on the front. So you just have to put it like this, but you wanna make sure that those are pointing up because the head gaskets are a little bit different right here in the middle. Um, the other side doesn't have these two little connection things. So we're gonna make sure that's up. Okay, I got them all snug down. Now I'm going to tighten them first to 30 pounds, and then I'm going to tighten them to like 55 pounds, and then do the full 78 to 83 pounds. So I'll just probably go right in the middle, 80 pounds. So 30, 55, 80. I know there's still watery oil on here and I figured the whole engine's covered in that stuff so cleaning this off probably isn't going to do a whole lot. I'm going to put oil on the cam lobes and all that stuff but uh, I don't see a point in cleaning it off if the whole crank is sitting in that stuff right now. You guys saw me go ahead and take that head off and put it on and all that and uh, it's pretty much just reassembly now. I'm going to go ahead and do the other head. Uh, off camera just because it's pretty much the same exact thing and I want to get it done pretty quick it Takes a little bit of time to film and do all this, but it's pretty much the same exact thing uh, Should come out pretty easy and you know clean it up and put it back in Got this head on there. Uh, pretty much ready to put the valve cover on. Got the lower plenum on. Those bolts are tightened to 10 foot pounds. And then the fuel rail also around 10 foot pounds, uh, give or take a couple. But um, I'm gonna put the heat shield on this side before I forget. So then once I put the heat shield in, I can put the dipstick back in as well. And then it's just reassembly from here. Once I get that valve cover on, it's pretty much like I'm doing, you know, spark plugs and the timing belt.
All right, time to do timing belt stuff. Um, whenever I do timing belts, I also replace the cam seals. So we gotta take these cam sprockets off of there. It's a 17 millimeter. These AC compressor bolts fit perfectly. There's some uh, little places to screw them in right behind the sprocket so you can loosen them. I'm gonna use the impact in combination with this thing on there. The impact is so much better at taking these out because if you use a wrench, sometimes you'll bend these things and then you gotta get new ones. Okay, now we can go ahead and take the cam sprocket off here. Uh, the impact wrench really helps with that. It's a 17, I'm just gonna kinda stick this up here and hold the cam sprocket and undo it. There we go. Now you don't want to twist the cam sprocket at all when you take it off. Boom, see how it just pulls right off like that? Now, I'll get you guys closer to it, but you can see our cam seal. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to take those out. See, these cam seals can be super hard to get out. I know the first time I tried, it took me like four hours to get them all out and replaced. Now, uh, there's a couple tricks you can use. Here's like a paint. It's like a paint can opener. Sometimes you can wiggle these things like underneath it, kind of. This one seems like it might be a little tough. This one's a little too much, too bent, so I might uh, flatten it a little bit. But yeah, something with a hook like that can work. Little like dental picks and, and stuff like that. And then one that I've used before and I might end up using today is you get a really small drill bit, right? And drill through it since there's this seal has like a metal ring around it. You drill through that metal ring and then send like a little, like a drywall screw through it. And then you can grab it with a, with some pliers. Sometimes you need two, two um, screws in there to pull it out, but then you can just grab it with some pliers and yank it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and try with this pick. I'm gonna flatten it a little bit because it's too curved. I can't really fit it under there. All right. All right flatten this thing out a little bit. Now, pretty much what you're trying to do is there is a little lip here that kind of seals it and then it goes to the metal part. So what you're trying to do is slide it in. Let's see if you guys can see that. I'm sliding it underneath. And I'm gonna just like kind of bend it up a little bit. It's very hard to show you, but I'll do it on this side. Maybe it's easier. Get in there, just kind of pull it. You can, you're just going to end up working it all the way around. There you go, this side. You can see it kind of coming off of there. See, this guy's kind of stuck in there. You don't want to mar up the cam very much, the shaft there, or the valve cover. So you got to be pretty careful. There we go, we got some movement here. There we go. It's actually not the valve cover, I meant the head. So there it slid, that came out. Now, what I usually use to pound these things in is just this seal for one. So you'll get the new one, cover the, the new one in oil and stuff, and then go ahead and push this thing onto there and hammer the seal. Or if you have like a PVC pipe that fits around there, that'll work perfect too. Doesn't need to go in there very far, just a little bit more than flush with this head. Okay. Here is the part number for this 96 Mitsubishi Montero SR uh, with the 3.5 dual overhead cam, MD152603. Oh, that is the correct one. Let me go ahead and open this. Now I get these parts from uh, PartSuk. And, uh, oh man, hard to open. So I get my parts from Partsuk as well as Rock Auto. They usually sell OEM stuff. So 
I am able to do that compared to the old seal. Looks good. It's like a new version of it. So I'm going to put some oil on the inside and the outside of this thing just to help it go in there. Now I actually found a socket that fits over the shaft here and is also the perfect the perfect diameter for this. It's a 32 millimeter. It's a deep set Pittsburgh one. Um, so that should work, but it doesn't go all the way on. So you got to put the old seal on there and drive it a little bit further. Put some oil on this thing and slide it on there. Let's go ahead and slide that on. Okay. I can almost do this by hand. Almost by hand. So now I'm going to slide the old seal on there so I can drive it in. Okay. I'm going to dry my hands off here. All right. Now I got my socket, my hammer, hammer it in. That's pretty far. Let's see if I can get this guy off again. Ah. Uh, it's not even all the way, so let me get this left side a little more. That's the thing, you gotta make sure they're even. Alrighty, I think that's gonna do it. That's looking good all the way around. These cam sprockets go in there at 65 foot pounds, so just know that. And um, I actually made a tool for this. I'll show you guys in a second, but uh, I'll go ahead and tighten those to 65. Okay, here is my tool. It's just a, I don't know, maybe an 18 inch long piece of steel that I welded to two nubs on there that can grab into these, all right? So you're tightening it or loosening it, actually. I mean, you could use this. And uh, I just plasma cut this little space in there so I can fit a socket. Very, very simple and crude. I made it pretty quickly just because I needed it. I didn't have a tool. I think Mitsubishi sells a tool. Uh, I don't know if it looks as nice as this one, but they probably have one. Now I'm going to start doing all the timing belt stuff. I'm going to put the intake on a little bit later because I still have to delete the, the um, butterfly valves in it. So now I'm just going to be doing all the timing belt stuff, like the water pump, the tensioners, the belt itself, all that stuff. Got all the cam seals in. Let's start with the water pump. You don't have to take the uh, thermostat housing bolts out, just these two. And then there's one on the back and you undo this hose. Should pull out of there. Alrighty. There you go. Now that's your water pump down there. Uh, undo, there's five bolts. This should come out. I have to pry it out of there. This is always a bit tricky, getting the water pump in there. With the gasket behind it. So, so it goes like that. Finally got it on there. Took like five minutes, but uh, there's this little sheet metal piece here that needs to get this the water pump goes behind it so i was kind of hung up on that but got it in there you can shine a light through the top here and see 
if you're in line with the o-ring thing but uh, I think I'm gonna do the timing belt without putting the rest of this on it just makes it a little bit easier to see and uh, yeah so let's start let's tighten down the water pump and then replace all these pulleys here and then I'll throw the tensioner in and then we'll get the timing belt on okay I got the two bearings on uh, I use Koyo bearings uh, just because that's a really good brand now here is the tensioner pulley which is this guy down here you might be able to see it I'll put you guys closer to it in a second here's the tensioner pulley uh, it's basically a cam pulley type of thing now you should they make a tool right I have the tool but I've never used the tool until this till this time so you just put it in there and you'll be able to like cam it to tension the belt without the hydraulic tensioner in there but uh, I'll show you guys that in a second normally what I do is I get a thick nail that fits in there I might have to grind it down a little but I'll make like a U and then I'll get a screwdriver and stick it through there and twist it pretty much as hard as I can go uh, until the nail breaks and that seems to have always worked for me but now I got the tool which is pretty awesome and uh, we'll go ahead and get that in there. I'll see if I can get a good view of it for you guys in there. Here are the part numbers on the pulleys. I don't know which one's which, but you need both of them if you're doing this. I don't know if there's any other part numbers on here. Nope, there's that guy. And then that guy. And let's see where my timing belt go. I use Gates timing belts. They're really good. Uh, I think that's even OEM. OEM uses Gates. Here is the. This is a highly saturated one. Never heard of that, but whatever. Made in Japan. Let's go ahead and put this on. All right. Start from the crank. Around the crank. That's going to be the hardest one to keep there. Now, I actually have the cam locking tools, but I'm going to show you guys how to do it like this. You need this 17 wrench. Let me get that slid in there a little better. Like I said. Let's wrap it around this guy too. Okay, that kind of gives us a semi-secure loop. Now, pulling pretty tight on this. It's very hard to show. Now what I'm going to do is turn this cam until I can get it lined up. Until it's lined up, right? So... Right there is lined up. Now I don't want the belt to slide off. Lined up there. Now the zip ties come in. Now I'm going to zip tie. You need a bunch of hands for this. Or just two. If you're as good as I am. I'm just joking. Just kind of feed the zip tie through it. some point it'll pop out so you can grab it and I like that you grab some others. why don't you just use the cam tool because all you're doing is zip tying it so it doesn't slide off of the teeth clamping the belt to there so there's that that's on time because don't want this to come off of the crank there can be a little slack there because you're gonna pull it and it's gonna come in all right so you don't let's see is that guy in time it's very hard to tell with the camera here now this guy is already in time that's great now This is where your second zip tie comes in. Okay. 
I hope you guys can see some of this excellent handiwork. I'm joking. I'm making this look super hard. It's also probably a good ad for the uh, cam locking tools. Okay, this bank is timed up. Again, you don't... This is only timed up if your belt does not slide off of the crank. So don't let it come off of the crank. All right? I'm going to keep that tight, pull this guy down underneath the water pump, up and around, something like that, okay, now I have to line up, Let's see if I can show you guys this, so this cam, you can see two, or the dots over here, it needs to go all the way over there, which means it actually sprung out of tension so this is going to be a little hard to get there it might spring don't be alarmed if it does almost there see there it went the spring you're kind of like balancing it just, oh, see there's quite a bit of tension in there it under there all right now that guy's in time oh see I had it had that and it came out so that's why you zip tie it so keep going try again Right there. Watch your fingers. Hmm. I think I might to back. Yeah. That is how I want it. Third zip tie, here it comes. Watch your fingers, I have a feeling this thing is going to spring on me here. Again guys, I could totally just use the cam locks right now. So if you have cam locks, good for you. Okay, see, even though that happened, it doesn't matter because they still have this on there. Here is the tensioner I bought only by OEM tensioners. Here is the part number. Now this only works on the dual overhead cam 3.5. It's not the single overhead cam. Okay, you guys got to be happy with this, with this cam review. So hopefully you don't fall in there. Now, these are... These are the two holes I was talking about. I'm gonna insert the tool in there, or if you don't have the tool, a couple of, or a nail. Let's see. You can see how that tightens up everything. All right, now, once you tighten that up, you tighten this bolt right here. You tighten it pretty strong, so you get those things kinda facing horizontal maybe a little more uh, like this way but uh, you, you can kind of feel how tight it is all the way around and that's how you do it now I can actually tell right here that when I do that this cam up here far left cam uh, goes out of time by one tooth 
Okay, it actually looks like I have a couple more things to do. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in time and then I'll get back to this. Alrighty, it's all in time. You can see there, in line, in line. These two guys, in line, in line. Now that is what it looks like. And just for reference, this is how my two dots ended up. It's a little bit off of uh, horizontal, so it's pretty tight. Now, uh, I can pull the pin on this. Boom, pin is pulled. You should be able to put it back in. That's how tight, that's how tight this thing should be. All right, back with you guys a day after Thanksgiving. Hopefully everyone had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. And uh, pretty much all we're gonna be doing here today is putting it back together. I think this is gonna be the last day working on it. Still gotta put the intake on, all those brackets, throttle body, all the covers up here, but uh, I think we could do it. Okay, so here is the old crank bolt. You can see it's got this big old long spacer. And here is the new bolt. You can see, I'll take it out of the package. That is the part number for the bolt. It also comes with, you buy another washer, it's a couple bucks. Now that is the number for the washer. It is all back together. All I gotta do is do an oil change on it, put the battery in, and should be a brand new motor. All right, it's pouring rain out here. Let's see if this thing starts up. It's got oil in it, ready to go. There we go guys, you can see all the smoke coming off of here. That's just all my uh, all my fingerprints and my hand grease and all that stuff getting on there. Pretty normal, but uh, it sounds smooth. It's running good, good oil pressure, all that stuff. But um, you can tell it really needs that idle air control valve to work correctly. But yeah, nice and running and that's how you do it. All right, guys, thank you for watching. That is going to be it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I also have an Instagram now where you guys can kind of be ahead of the game and see what I'm doing, you know, on a daily basis. I'm going to put a link to my Instagram in the description there. It's evans.auto. Pretty easy to find. But yeah, you'll see pretty much what I'm doing every other day. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.